How many know that the God of 2017 is still the God of 2018? Yeah. Are you excited this morning? Yeah. Okay, so here's what I want to encourage you to do. We're not going to talk about New Year's resolutions and all that kind of thing today. We're not going to get into all that. But this is what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to start this new year coming up with an attitude of worship. With an attitude that says, I'm going to go after God with everything I have in me in 2018. Amen? I heard a uh, friend of mine say the other day, he said, uh, never let your kids, he was talking to parents, he said, never let your kids be surprised that you worship God. That caught me off guard a little bit because I'm like, whoa, I got to re-examine things and I got to look at my own self and say, it, are my kids surprised when they see me worship? They shouldn't be. So 2018 is going to be a good year. I'm believing good things. I'm believing big things from God and we're going to believe that God's going to give us new vision. Amen. So why don't we talk about vision this morning? I, I, I thought about the prayer that Pastor Jared just prayed, and I thought, man, he's just like preaching my message right now. I mean, it was just, everything is lining up this morning for what I want to talk to you about. Uh, like I said, we're not going to get into New Year's resolutions. If you've got a treadmill for Christmas, great, use it. That's awesome. But we're not going to talk about what that can do for you. But today I want to look at two words. The words are mission and vision. There are two words that we have to understand and we have to see what the difference between them are so that we can understand what vision really is. So are you with me this morning? Are we ready? Because we're gonna get into this and I wanna show you some things and I wanna see how we can separate these two words and understand where God wants to take us for the future. All right, is that cool with everybody? Good, all right. So when it comes to mission, you see mission is something that is set before us that never changes. Mission will never change. The mission of our church is never going to change. The mission that God has laid before us and before his people will never change. The mission's not going to. Now, the vision is that in which we are burdened for that can change, okay? So let's not get the two mixed up because a lot of times we'll do that. We'll say, well, you know, God's given me this mission, so I believe this is what he wants me to do this year. No, God's given you a vision. The mission's always gonna be there, all right? Are you with me so far? Yeah. Good, so here we go. Without having vision, the mission will never be accomplished. Without vision, the mission will never be accomplished. And we're gonna get into that a little bit more in just a few minutes. I want to encourage you, kind of a, a little commercial break real quick. I want to uh, encourage you to be here next week because you're going to hear vision like never before next week. You're going to be blown away. You're going to shout. You're going to get excited because God has got laid out for this church something incredible, and we want you to all be a part of it. So next week, mark on your calendar. You do not want to miss Vision Sunday. I know Pastor Jared just alluded to it, but uh, I promised him I would too in my message. <laughs> just kidding. But be ready, because I'm going to talk about it a little bit more later, okay? So just be ready for that. Today, I want to show you the difference between these two words and look at the biblical ways that we can apply them to our lives and to what God wants to do for our church. When looking at these two topics, I want to show you how they both compare before we get in too deep with this message. So I've got a little slide on the screen we're gonna throw up there, and uh, I wanna show you what the difference between mission and vision really is, okay? So mission is the why. Mission is the why. Vision is the what, okay? Making a statement is what mission is. Taking a snapshot is what vision is. A mission informs. A vision inspires. A mission is doing. A vision is seeing. A mission is from the head, and a vision is from your heart. A mission always comes first. See, that's something that we mess up sometimes. The mission always comes first. The vision comes second. The mission clarifies. The vision challenges. A mission will always answer the question, why do we exist? A vision will always answer the question, what will the future hold? For 2018, you have to ask God for a new vision, but never ask him for a new mission because the mission will always stay the same. We're gonna get into that in just a second. A mission is always about doing or what we are doing today. A vision will always be about what we're going to become or what the future holds. 
I want to begin this morning with a piece of scripture, and it's a piece of scripture that we all know and is probably as, as, as uh, popular as John 3.16, but it's found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. It's the Great Commission. It's the, it's the, uh, most Christians know this scripture, but if you don't, I'm going to read it for you anyway. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus, just before he was taken up into heaven, he issued a command or a mission to his followers. He said, go, make disciples. That was the mission that he laid before us. That's never gonna change. The mission of our church, the mission of our lives as believers will never change. Go and make disciples. It's in concrete, it's right there. You're never gonna change that. Don't ever try to change that because you can't. Because that is what God has intended for us to do as Christians. Go make disciples. That's the mission. That's in concrete. This is a piece of scripture that we've heard so many times. It's a moment in time when everything Jesus taught was summed up in one sentence. Everything Jesus taught, all those moments that he said, we have the power to heal the sick. All those moments he said, you have the power to drive out demons in my name. All those moments are summed up in this one piece of scripture. All those moments when he showed his followers what it meant to be a disciple. Every word he spoke was summed up in one sentence. Go and make disciples. Everything he said was put into the mission. Go and make disciples. He laid a mission before us all. The mission of the church will and always will be what Paul said. Preach Christ and him crucified. That's the mission of our church, right? That's the mission of us as believers. Make disciples, preach Christ and him crucified. Win people to Jesus. That's the mission. Our mission at Bethel is simple. Make disciples. Reach out to those who are lost without Christ. Lift Jesus up in all we do. Stand for what is right while at the same time showing the world Jesus through our actions and our speech. And build up the saints for the work of the ministry. Go and make disciples. That's the mission. So today as we think about mission and vision, I want you to, in your mind, separate those two and understand what the mission is. Go and make disciples. So keep that locked up in your head as we start talking about vision in just a few minutes. In the business world... In the world of self-help and promotional development or professional or personal development, it's a common thing to promote the setting of goals. How many has ever set a goal before? I've set a goal a hundred times. How many has ever followed through with that goal? Not every time. My goal last year was to be ripped. Still waiting for that to happen because it's not. So obviously my goal needs to extend a little bit. Maybe that goal is turning more into a vision than it is a mission, right? I mean... uh, Um, goals and vision are oftentimes intermingled as the same word. It's not. Setting goals is just that. It's easy to set a goal. I set a goal for this. By this time next year, I want to have $1,000 saved up. That's a good goal. That's great. There's nothing wrong with setting goals. The idea of setting goals is not biblical. It's not in the Bible, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. So if you're setting goals, awesome. Do it. Set goals all you want to. That's great. But by this time next year, I'm believing God for $100,000 to give to missions. That's more of a vision than it is a goal, especially if you only make $30,000 a year, right? It's kind of, it seems impossible, but that's vision. Vision is seeing things that only God can do. Only the hand of God can touch this because I can't do it no matter what I do. No matter how many kidneys I sell, I can't reach that goal. It's just, that's hard to do, right? So we have to understand the difference between setting a goal and a vision. We could say we're setting a goal for seven campuses in two years. Great. Guess what? It's not going to happen just by setting the goal. It's only going to understand that that's God's vision and only can happen through his hand. That's not something that we can just go write a check for. That's not something we can just say, hey, we're going to start here, 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 here. Okay, we got our seven campuses. Awesome. Our goal is set. No. No. What we have to do is go, 
God, I, I see this right here. I see this is where you're leading us. You're leading us here. You're leading us here. But God, you're going to have to make it happen. That's vision. That's not goal setting. It's different. When talking about vision, you have to see things differently. You have to see that all things that are in the realm of physical possibilities are no longer important when it comes to vision. God, how are you gonna do that? Doesn't matter because God's gonna do it. God, how am I gonna make this happen? Doesn't matter because I'm gonna believe God's gonna make that happen because I have to see things differently. I have to see the big picture of things. Why, is this, why isn't it important? Because when you have vision, it will not be you in the physical realm bringing the vision to pass. It will be only by the hand of God. See, no organization will survive without vision. You walk into any successful organization and you'll see their vision, you'll see their mission, you'll see all, this thing, all these things laid out because why? Because they have to have something to go for. They have to have something to believe in. They have to have something to shoot for. Our mission, the, the cool thing about the church is so easy because our mission is already laid out before us. We don't have to come up with a mission statement. Why? Because it's already there in scripture. Jesus did that for us. Go and make disciples. That's our mission. But we have to seek the face of God to get vision. For your own life, you have to seek the face of God to get vision and let him give it to you. If you begin to create your own vision, guess what? You're just setting a goal that more than likely you're never gonna attain. My goal is not to be Mr. Olympia. And I know it's never gonna happen. If that's God's vision, wonderful. But I don't believe it is. I'm not praying for that because I know my wife wouldn't like it. I mean, can you imagine me bumping into walls and everything else? No, that's not what I want. You can set a goal all day long and go for that goal, but don't mistakenly think that setting a goal is what the vision God has for you. Don't ever do that. Without vision, Things die without vision, people aren't saved. Churches close and all hope becomes lost without vision. The mission is still there, but without vision, the mission will never be accomplished. Amen, everybody with me so far? Amen. All right, good. I wanna remain on vision for a few minutes because I think it's so important, especially leading up to next week and what we're gonna talk about next week. Second commercial break, you need to be here next week. All right, you need to call all your friends, look around, the ones that are cozy at home right now, you need to be here next week. We'll have coffee, we'll have the heat on. So make sure you're here next week. John Maxwell said, who, who is one of the most, utmost authorities on leadership, said this one time, vision is the ability to see, the ability to believe, and the ability to do. Okay, that's what he said. The ability to see, the ability to believe, and the ability to do. In these three things, there are, there are three things that I see. I see awareness, I see attitude, and I see action. So I wanna take you through these three things really quickly and show you what they look like broken down, okay? To see the vision God has given us fulfilled and in turn, the mission of the church accomplished, these three things are vital, we have to have these. We have to have these operating in the vision that God has given us, okay? So number one, it is vital that we are aware, that we are aware of God's hand on the vision, the ability to see. We have to be aware that God's hand is on the vision. If we're not aware that God's hand's on the vision, what's it become? A goal setting. We have to be aware that God's hand's on it. I'm gonna tell you this, if you set a goal and you mistakenly think that's vision, you're gonna frustrate yourself when it doesn't come to pass. So you have to know, you have to know that it's God giving you that vision, especially when it's something that's so far above your pay grade that you can't reach it, you know it's God and you have to believe God for it. Next week, you're gonna see fresh vision. I know this is third commercial break, but bear with me. You're gonna see fresh vision next week. 
You're gonna hear how things are gonna come, how, how things are gonna work, how things are gonna go. Not because it's something we've made up, but it's something that God has spoken to us. And we're gonna stand on that and we're gonna believe God for it. We have to come to the place where we have the ability to see the vision right before us. Second thing you see in this is it is vital that we have the right attitude as we see our church moving in the direction God has put into motion. The ability to believe. The ability to believe. See, there's power in proclamation. You know, when, when Pastor Jared prays the blessing over uh, you guys in, at the end of services each week, it's not so it can be just a prayer, but it's declaring and proclaiming blessing and favor over God's people. There's power in that. There's power in proclamation, good or bad, I promise you. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 21, that power of life and death lies in the tongue. It is important that we speak life over the vision that God has given us so that we will experience the favor of the Lord. You can speak death on it. Did you know that? You can speak death over a vision. I don't believe that's ever gonna happen. There's seven churches, come on, that, we don't need that. That's, we don't need that. You're speaking death over a vision that God has given us. That's dangerous. The ability to believe, have the right attitude. It is important that we speak life over vision and in that speaking, we proclaim God's will and God's favor over the vision he's given us. It's important that we do that. The third thing I see in this little Maxwell quote is that vision will not come to pass without action, the ability to do. Vision will not come to pass without action. We can dream, we can goal set, or whatever you wanna do, but without taking action, it's never gonna happen. Listen, vision is no different. There's no difference in vision. If God gives you a vision, it is your responsibility to act on that vision. When God gives you, and I'm gonna say when because I'm gonna believe this for you, or with you. When God gives you a vision for this upcoming year, take action on it. If God calls me to be a doctor in a third world country, and I believe with all my heart, God is calling me that. He's given me a vision to administer health to third world, the people in third world countries. That's an awesome vision, right? But if I don't go to medical school and learn how to do that, what's gonna happen? The vision is just gonna become stagnant. Why? Because I have to take action sometimes. See, God's not just gonna say, here's the vision, I'm gonna make it all happen and you're gonna step into it and everything's gonna be awesome. No, he says, here's the vision, work for it. I'm gonna bless your socks off. I'm gonna bless everything that your hands touch. I'm gonna show you favor. I'm gonna show you rewards. I'm gonna show you blessing, but you have to walk towards the vision that I've given you. Because if you sit there, that vision's gonna die. It's gonna die. Seven by 70, it's a huge vision, but you know what? It's not unattainable. It's not impossible. Why? Because we got a God who's bigger than we are. We've got a God who gave us the vision. Why do you think he's gonna give it to us if he can't make it happen? Take action. Next week as we hear all God is doing and all God wants to do through our church, let's maintain the thoughts of these three things. Be aware, have the right attitude, speak life to the vision and act on the vision that God has given us. I'm confident that God has a will that will be fulfilled. I'm confident in that. Our mission will always be the same. Our vision is laid before us. Are we ready to pursue and become all God has intended for us to be? There's a scripture in Proverbs that says where there's no vision, the people perish. Now I hear that scripture a lot and I hear a lot of pastors talk about that scripture. And sometimes it's taken a little out of context because when we look at it and we go, without vision, the people perish. 
If I don't give you vision for the church, then you're going to die or it's going to die or whatever. But when you look at that scripture and you study it a little bit, let me, let me tell you what that means. Where there is no vision, the people perish. It was a challenge to the people saying, you've heard what the prophets say. If you don't apply those things to your life and you don't use the vision that God has given you through the words of the prophets, then you're just going to die. You're just going to die off. Because later it talks about the law in that same scripture. It talks about abiding in the law and following the law. Let me explain something to you. If we as individuals don't understand what vision is, not only for the church, but for our own lives, then we will perish. We will not be able to fulfill anything that God has for us or for our church. Where there is no vision, the people perish. The number one prayer that we should all pray starting tomorrow, January 1st, is God, give me new vision. Give me a fresh outlook. Give me a fresh new word for 2018. Let me understand where my church is going and help me, if, it, if this is you, help me get behind the vision that you have given our church. Because I promise you, God's calling is bigger than us. God's calling needs the body of Christ to come together and win the lost. There's people dying without Jesus out there. Next week, you're going to hear some statistics that are going to blow your mind when it comes to unchurched people. And you'll see why God is taking us in the direction he's taking us. This morning, I want to encourage you. Walk in the vision that the Lord's given us. Walk in the vision that he's going to give you for this fresh new year. And understand that the God of 2017 is still the God of 2018. Amen? You stand to your feet with me this morning. If you don't mind, I, would, I just want to pray over you this morning. I just want to pray a blessing over you. I want to ask God for great things for you this year. And uh, we're going to believe together that God's going to do some incredible things. Amen? Amen? Jesus, we love you today. And God, I ask you right now, in the holy name of God, Lord, that you will show every person in this room, every person that's watching online, all our family that's online right now, God. I pray, God, right now, favor over their life. I pray blessing over their life, Lord. God, we speak life to their situations. God, if they're walking through a valley right now, I pray, God, that you will be the God of the valley, Lord, right now. God, that you will walk through the fire with them, Lord. And God, they'll understand that when they get to the other side, there is victory there, Lord, that you will hold their arms up in victory, Lord. God, help us to trust you. Help us to walk arm in arm with you, Lord. Help us to be like Moses and say, I will not walk another foot unless you're right beside me. So God, I ask you right now, as we walk into this new year tomorrow, Lord, I pray, God, that you will walk with us face to face, cheek to cheek, God, and never leave us. Help us know that you're there. Help us know that you're right with us, Lord. And God, I pray that you will give every person in this room, every person on our online campus right now, Lord, God, give us new vision. Give us favor. Give us blessing, God, as we strive to follow you. Lord, we love you today. And I thank you for this opportunity to be in your house and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Next week, what happens next week? You're all going to be here, right? Awesome. Well, we'll see you next week, January 7th. Don't forget Vision Sunday. Invite a friend. We'll see you then.